Hello everyone, myself N. Udayaranjan God, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Aeronautical Engineering, MLR Institute of Technology. So, in the previous session, we discussed about structural idealization and we have seen what is the meaning of idealization and what is the principle behind it. So, how an actual section can be converted into an idealized section by considering the booms, which are nothing but the concentrations of areas. And also, we have discussed the idealization of a panel in which uh, we try to find out uh, boom areas B1 and B2 in the last session. Now, in the present session, now we are going to utilize the formula of the boom areas B1 and B2, whatever we have discussed in the last session. And now we are going to solve problems on structural idealization here. So, when it comes to the problems of structural idealization, so you know that again it will be subjected to uh, the any structure may be subjected to bending loads or shear loads or torsional loads okay but how uh, the idealization will play a role here so an actual structure will be given so he may be asked to calculate the direct stress distribution or shear flow distribution or you know he may be, uh, he may be asked to calculate the twist okay so but uh, since we are dealing with structural idealization our main aim is to first uh, idealize a given actual section into an idealized section and then proceed for the bending shear and torsion of open or closed section beams. So, we will look it into idealization first and then later on we will see the effect of the other loads. So, uh, you can consider this question. The part of a wing section is in the form of two cell box as shown in figure in which the vertical spars are connected to the wing skin through angle sections. So, you can clearly observe the angle sections here. Okay, angle sections and all having a cross sectional area of 300 mm square. So, he has given the cross sectional area for this angle sections as 300 mm square and he is asking to idealize the section into an arrangement of direct stress carrying booms and the shear stress only carrying panels suitable for resisting the bending moments in a vertical plane and then he is asking to position the booms at the spar or skin junctions. So, the main uh, question in this is nothing but you know he is asking to idealize the given figure. So, this is the actual uh, diagram which he has given and in which uh, you can see here and uh, there are vertical spars are there and then uh, the stringers are nothing but the angle sections that are attached over here, here, here and at 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6. Okay. And he has given the length of this section, uh, two cell box also, wing section and uh, the width he has given 600 mm and depth here he has given 400 mm. Here he has given uh, 200 mm. Since it is uh, following some linearity and you can assume uh, the depth here as 300 mm as well. And he also gave the various thicknesses uh, of uh, different panels 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5 and 5, 6. Now, let us look into the problem here. So, how to solve this one? So, the idealized section. So, what we are going to do here it is you know the very first thing what we need to do? We need to idealize the given actual section into the idealized section. So, we have to remove this angle section and replaced by the booms here like this. Remove them and replace by the booms here so that the section idealized section looks like this one. Okay, so here one boom, uh, here one boom, here one boom, here one boom, and here one boom. So we'll write one, two, three, four, five, six, six booms. They will be ideally replaced like that. Okay. Now after replacing here, we need to find out the areas of this one. So what is B1? What is B2? What is uh, B3? Okay, and what is B4, B5, and B6? So all these boom areas you have to calculate okay so after calculating then you can position the booms like this and then that will be the idealized diagram so the idealized section shown in figure and b uh, in which you can see the idealized section and section and then it is following a symmetry like you know b1 that is equals to b6 and from this diagram b2 that is equals to b5 and from this diagram b3 that is equals to b4 so that you can clearly see from the diagram since the given section is symmetrical about the horizontal axis. Okay. Now, 
So since the section is required to resist the bending moments in a vertical plane, the direct stress at any point in the actual wing section is directly proportional to the distance from the horizontal axis of symmetry. So this is very important thing that you know, since the section is required to resist bending moments in a vertical plane, the direct stress at any point in the actual wing section is directly proportional to its distance from the horizontal axis of symmetry. So that means this is the principle that is the direct stress is directly proportional to the distance from the horizontal axis of symmetry. So to, to write for the stresses sigma 1 or either sigma 1 or sigma 2, we do not look for stresses instead we look for the distances from the centroid to the respective booms. Okay. So anyway that you can uh, see in the problem also. Now coming to this boom areas one and let us try to see how you can calculate uh, the boom area for this one. Now first uh, let us trying to write here. So we know the formula for boom area that is boom area is equals to Td into B by 6 into 2 plus sigma 2 by sigma 1. So let us try to calculate for boom 1 first. Okay. So boom 1. Now when it comes to boom 1 you have to see how many adjacent panels are there. So for boom 1 there is one adjacent panel that is 1 2 and there is another adjacent panel that is 1 6. Also he has given the stringer area. So the stringer area he has given us 300 mm square. So that also we need to consider. Here we have only one angle section. So the area of that angle section we need to add first. So that is 300 mm square and then you have to write the boom area for the panel 1 6 that is this one and then followed by you need to write the boom area for panel 1 2. So if you try to write this one so what you can write is 300 plus apply the boom area formula for panel 1 6. So what you can write is Td into B by 6 for 1 6. So for panel 1 6 I am writing here Td into B by 6 into 2 plus sigma 6 by sigma 1 that is what you have to add okay plus now we are trying to write for 1 2 so you can write again Td into B by 6 into 2 plus sigma 2 by sigma 1 okay now the Td into B by 6 it is for 1 6 panel and this is for 1 2 panel that we have to apply. So, here you can get 300 plus. Now, if you look at this panel 1 6, so for panel 1 6, the thickness is nothing but 3 mm and its uh, depth is nothing or width is nothing, the panel width is nothing but 400 mm. So, we will try to write that one. So, 3 into 400 divided by 6 into 2 plus. Now, sigma 6. Now, what is sigma 6? So, sigma 6 is nothing but the distance from the centroidal axis to the boom. 6 okay now if you look at this centroidal axis so from here up to boom 6 what is this distance the total depth is nothing but 400 mm and this depth will be 200 mm but since it is the below the centroidal axis you have to consider it as minus 200 sigma 6 and again sigma 1 is similar the distance from the neutral axis that means from again centroidal axis to above so that is nothing but again that is plus 200 so i am writing here 200 plus now you look at for 1 2 panel. So for 1 2 panel, uh, the thickness is nothing but uh, 2 mm and the uh, width of the panel is 600. So we will write 2 into 600 divided by 6 into 2 plus sigma 2 by sigma 1. Sigma 2 is nothing but the distance from here to here. So at the mid uh, span, you can see that from the following the linearity 400 mm here and 200 mm at the end and so that here it will be 300 mm. And half of the distance from here to here it will be 150 mm plus 150. So we are going to write 150 plus 150 divided by sigma 1. So sigma 1 will be again from the distance from neutral axis to the boom 1. So again this is the distance which is nothing but you know 200 mm. Okay. So this is how we will try, try to calculate the boom area for 1. So whatever you calculate the boom area for 1. So it will be similar like uh, boom 6. So therefore we will write B1 that is equals to b6 that is equals to and you can calculate all these things and you, then you are going to get the boom area 1. So the calculation is already done here and uh, you can see here the boom area for 1 you are going to get it as 1050 mm square. Okay. So now 
we calculated one boom, boom boom area we calculated one boom area and then the other one you can write by symmetry the similarly you have to uh, try to calculate the other boom areas also which are there here uh, for b2 and b3 now let's look into that one now if you look at the diagram for this one uh, b2 so b2 and uh, since there are how many panels are attached to it one two is one panel that is attached to two boom two and then two three is two five is another panel and two three is another panel. so total there are three panels that are attached to the boom two also if you look at, at the uh, number of angle sections that are placed at boom two so there are two flange uh, two sections that are placed here angle section two angle sections and we know that each angle section area is 300 mm square so to start with this boom to formula so first we have to write there are two angle sections each of area 300 mm square so we have to write 2 into 300 then we have to write boom area we have to apply for panel 1 2 plus boom area for panel 2 5 plus boom area for panel 2 3 we have to apply okay so as we know the boom area is nothing but td into b by 6 into 2 plus sigma 2 by sigma 1 so here i am writing 2 into 300 plus b12 when you try to write so it's td into b by 6 into 2 plus sigma 2 by and uh, so you can consider this as b21 so that you'll write this as sigma 1 by sigma 2 so whatever you are considering the boom number that should come in the denominator next coming to here and for 2 phi again td into b by 6 into 2 plus that is sigma 5 by sigma 2 okay plus td into b by 6 into 2 plus again this is sigma 3 by sigma 2 now we can substitute all the thicknesses because this is for 1 2 panel this is for 2 5 panel and this is for 2 3 panel and we have the thicknesses of all the panels for example for 1 2 panel uh, the thickness is nothing but 2 mm and the width is nothing but 2 600 so you can write 2 into 600 divided by 6 okay and sigma 1 so if you look at it clearly sigma 1 is nothing but from the distance from centroidal axis up to boom 1 so that is nothing but plus 200 and that you have to write and uh, sigma 2 is nothing but from here to here that is plus 150 and uh, sigma 3 is nothing but distance from here to here that is half of the distance 200 that is plus 100 and uh, coming to the next one sigma 5 here so sigma 5 the distance uh, from the centroidal axis to boom 5 which is uh, below the centroidal axis and it has got 300 mm so it will be minus 150 minus 150 mm that you have to write okay so with this you can substitute in this above in place of sigma 1 and sigma 2 and sigma 5 and sigma 3 and then writing the respective thicknesses and the boom area and the width you can get the boom area and again we know that b2 that is equals to b5 by symmetry okay so if you look at the calculations so you can see here the b2 calculation 2 into 300 mm and this is for panel 1 2 this is for panel 2 5 and this is for panel 3 2 okay so from this you can get uh, the boom 2 area that is b2 equals to b5 equals to 1791.7 mm square okay so this is how we calculate boom area 2 <clears throat> and thereby you can write b5 by symmetry and if you look at the third one the last one here in this that is b3 and to calculate this b3 area uh, boom 3 area and then you can see there are two panels are uh, adjacent to this uh, boom 3 one is 2 3 and another one is 3 4 and also if you look at, at this 3 there is only uh, one angle section that is placed and that is area is nothing but 300 mm square so to start with this one first we'll have to add the area of that angle section 300 mm and then boom area for 2 3 and 3 4 you have to apply so td into b by 6 into 2 plus sigma 2 by sigma 3 and 3 should come in the denominator plus td into b by 6 into 2 plus sigma 4 by sigma 3 so clearly from this uh, what we can write here it is uh, 
थ्री हंड्रेड प्लस फॉर पैनल टू थ्री द थिकनेस इज नथिंग बट टू पॉइंट सॉरी वन पॉइंट फाइव एम एम सो यू कैन राइट वन पॉइंट फाइव इंटू विथ ऑफ द पैनल टू थ्री सिक्स हंड्रेड डिवाइडेड बाई सिक्स इंटू टू प्लस सिग्मा टू बाई सिग्मा थ्री सिग्मा टू इज प्लस वन फिफ्टी एंड देन सिग्मा थ्री इज नथिंग बट द हंड्रेड ओके एंड प्लस फॉर पैनल थ्री फोर इफ यू ट्राई टू राइट एंड थिकनेस फॉर थ्री फोर इज नथिंग बट टू एम एम एंड टू इंटू एंड विथ इज नथिंग बट टू हंड्रेड डिवाइडेड बाई सिक्स इंटू टू प्लस सिग्मा फोर बाई सिग्मा थ्री सिग्मा फोर सो इफ यू ट्राई टू लुक एट हियर इन द डायग्राम सिग्मा फोर फ्रॉम हियर टू बिलो सो दैट इज नथिंग बट माइनस हंड्रेड एंड सिग्मा थ्री इज फ्रॉम हियर टू अब अप टू बूम थ्री दैट इज प्लस हंड्रेड सो विल ट्राई टू राइट माइनस हंड्रेड डिवाइडेड बाई प्लस हंड्रेड which means itself you get uh, you know 1 and 2 minus 1 so total together you are going to get it as 1 okay so if you try to calculate you this you are going to get the boom area of a tree again from the symmetry b3 is equals to b4 so if you look at at this one so b3 you are going to get uh, the calculation like this and you are going to get the boom area as 891.7 mm square again from symmetry b3 can be made equal to b4 okay so for the problems of uh, any of the stresses like bending shear or torsional loads then what we need to do here here it is the very important uh, thing that we need to understand is an actual section will be given to us so before we proceed into the actual problem to find out its bending effect or shear effect or torsion effect so you need to first idealized into this idealized diagram by calculating its uh, boom areas and replace them here and then you have to proceed with either bending and shear or torsion analysis okay so that is what the problems in idealization that we need to do in this way okay so that's it for today's class and let's continue our um, class next class let's continue our next class by considering the bending effects Thank you everyone for watching